light of the recent tailings dam failure that happened in Brazil, what do you think the industry needs to do to prevent similar situations from happening in the future? Yeah, it uh, certainly came as a big shock and it's, uh, it's a tragedy that uh, this event took place. Um, certainly it, it brings into light um, what the way we design tailings facilities. Um, we've been traditionally in this part of the world, in Southern Africa, designing many upstream tailings facilities and the one that failed in Brazil was an upstream tailings design and um, we're going to have to rethink how we design and certainly rethink how we analyze these facilities um, and it's going to change the way we do things. We, we may well be looking now at more sort of dry disposal type uh, facilities, uh, filtration of the tailings and conveying it and trucking and, and stacking in, in, in different ways. It will make it more expensive, but if that's what it's going to take to uh, make things safer and more stable and, and um, protect our clients, that's, that's what we're going to have to do. The industry can't continue having tailings and failures. Yeah, no, absolutely. Andrew, I understand the concept of engineer of record is something you think is very important. Can you explain its relevance in terms of tailings dam storage facilities specifically? Yeah, so the engineer of record, the idea there is that one person becomes responsible for that tailings facility and sees it right from the very beginning in the design phase through to its commissioning and through its um, operation and construction phase into closure. And if you can have that continuity, you can make sure that that facility does fulfill its design and, and, and sees its life through in the correct way. And with that person in place, with authority, that we believe that that can be achieved. And I think the industry is moving in that direction where they're saying we can't sort of have an engineer at some of the stages and, and look after it ourselves in other stages and then hope it'll be all right. We need this proper supervision and proper guidance all the way through because of the consequences. Um, and, and so it puts a responsibility with a person or a group um, that, that will take on that uh, role right through the design life and operational life. I think the mining industry would benefit hugely from that. Yeah, um, clearly, you know, it's, it's not good to keep changing designers. It's not good to keep changing operators. And the personnel on the mine keep changing. And if the personnel, you know, keep changing, how do they plan properly for the facility? How do they budget properly for it? Do they know how it was operated two years ago? Do they know why it was designed in a certain way? And so if there's that continuity, the engineer of record can make sure that it's a smooth um, operation. Absolutely. So environmental responsibility is something that's really taking front stage in the mining industry. And from a, from a power generation point of view, Andrew, what do you think the industry can do to improve its, its footprint in that regard? Yeah, I think renewable power is certainly one of the options that uh, they have to look at. In many of the sort of remote mining areas, there isn't grid power or if there is, it might be unstable. So, so many of those mines in those remote areas may well start off with diesel generation. Not only, only is that expensive, but it's, it's not good for the environment. And there's all sorts of challenges involved in the logistics of getting fuel to, to those mines. So if there is alternatives um, in the renewable field, uh, we certainly would support that. And some of those involve things like run of river hydropower, or even hydropower from building dams. And they don't necessarily have to be big dams. Um, and that would be in addition to solar or wind. Now it might be that you need hybrid systems because quite, quite a few of those renewables won't give you your full load over the, over the life of the, uh, of the mine or certainly even during a full day if it's, um, if it's solar for instance. Um, and even with run of river hydro schemes um, you might find that during the wet season they can get their full load uh, of power generation but during the dry season um, you know, they have to rely on backup to, to, to support that. Okay. Andrew, thank you so much for your insights and such interesting topics. Thank you.